Hello, my name is Agnes Mornar. I was born in a Hungarian diaspora from Transylvania, Romania, and I grew up in Hungary. In my presentation, I would like to talk about Hungary's history of national separation and its effort for unification, as well as about my personal experiences coming from a diaspora separated from the homeland. The Kingdom of Hungary in the 19th century was a multinational, heterogeneous land with people of various ethnicities and religions. As part of the Austria-Hungary monarchy, Hungary was one of Europe's great political and economical power. The monarchy was geographically the second largest country in Europe and the third most populous. However, the Austria-Hungary monarchy lost in World War I, and with that, Hungary lost its leading political power as well in Europe. The 1920 Treaty of Trianon, prepared and signed during the Prague Peace Conference, took away two-thirds of Hungary's territory in order to create smaller nation-states in Central and Eastern Europe. As a result, large Hungarian-speaking pop uh, populations found themselves in neighboring countries. Today, approximately two million people live in the neighboring countries. The majority of them residing in Transylvania, Romania, followed by Slovakia and Serbia. It was a pivotal event which influenced Hungary's national identity as well as its internal and foreign policies for the next 100 years. In the 1990s, after the fall of the Soviet Union and the end of the communist regime, new revisionist ideas started to emerge. First, as historical nostalgia, and then in the more severe form of the Trianon trauma. A number of associations were established that promoted with varying, varying intensity the revisionist concept. In the 2000s, the deepening political and economical crisis in the second half of the decade brought about the arrival of extreme right ideologies. Far right groups started to emerge and tried to raise political capital by exploiting the revisionist movement and historical resentments caused by the Trianon trauma. In 2010, Fidesz, a right wing conservative party of Viktor Orban, won a two thirds majority in parliament. Viktor Orban's party first adopted a bill awarding citizenship and voting rights to Hungarians living abroad and made the anniversary of the Treaty of Trianon an official holiday, established as the Day of National Unity. Those activities have been part of Orban's larger political project. They were a response to the growing presence of the Trianon trauma in public debate and the fact that the increasingly popular far-right parties were raising the topic. In this way, Fidesz tried to win over the more radical sections of the right-wing electorate. Despite the fact that some actions and activities were made from a genuine desire for solidarity and national unification, ultimately the Trianon trauma became an instrument for populist politicians to gain support and votes from citizens not just in Hungary, but in the neighboring countries as well, thus help them stay in power. As someone who was born in the Hungarian diaspora in Transylvania, I feel personally ambivalent about the legislation of the Fidesz government. On one hand, I appreciate and welcome the newfound focus on the previously neglected diaspora and the desire for support and exchange. On the other hand, I fear that populist parties merely exploit those communities to further enhance their nationalistic ideology. For those who grew up in Transylvania as a member of the Hungarian minority, Often their identity as a Hungarian feels at risk of being scrutinized and erased. As a response, people can be often overbearing in order to try to preserve their identity, thus making them over-responsive and vulnerable to identity politics. Growing up in Hungary, I experienced different actions from various people when they learned that I am from a Hungarian diaspora. Some people reacted rather negatively, claiming that since I was born in Romania, I am not Hungarian, even though Hungarian is my mother language and I'm, my ancestors are Hungarians. Nonetheless, I have experienced plenty of positive reactions from people who were very excited and curious about my origin. Yet, despite their good intentions, their interests can come across often as ignorant and alienating. This is because of their lack of knowledge about the lives of people living in the diasporas. I recognize that Hungary has a different context and circumstances in regards to the problem of national separation and efforts for unification than the Korean Peninsula. By the Korean unification is a goal for two states of the same nation, the lost territories of Hungary are now sovereign states of various different nationalities. Yet I believe the consequences of revisionist politics in Hungary 
can be a valuable lesson for those who seek unification in the Korean Peninsula. In Hungary, the topic of national unification, experienced by all countries, became heavily politicized and co-opted by nationalist political parties for their own benefits. Groups of right-wing ideology are usually concerned more about the optics than real change. Collective trauma often becomes a political instrument of identity politics used against the opposition instead of aiming toward cooperation and sustainable solutions. This further drives a wedge between people and radicalizes them into different political sides. Hungary's revisionist, revisionist politics have caused and could, could potentially cause even more hostilities in the neighboring countries toward the diasporas or Hungary itself. For those in Korea who seek to work toward unification, this could be a caution right there, not to fall for the exploitation of political narratives and populistic or nationalistic sentiments. I acknowledge and welcome the importance of citizenship rights given to the people of the Hungarian diaspora. However, I believe those rights will not yield a positive change if it is not accompanied by social interactions between people living in and outside of Hungary. I believe the same is true for South and North Korea. Direct exchanges that yield to people from different communities to learn and gain insights into each other's lives and circumstances can make these issues less abstract and political. These personal experiences could help to abandon the us versus them mindset and envision a possible integration in the future that for now might seem impossible to achieve in the Korean Peninsula. A sustainable unification comes from within the people. Isolation leads to the alienation of groups of people from each other. Thus, to achieve true unification, it is important to socialize the people from all sides. Only through sharing our life experiences and the essence of who we are can we recognize and respect the humanity in each other. Thank you.